I am so excited to be recording this video. I know everyone starts their video saying I'm so excited, but I really am. I feel like if I move the mic, it's gonna pick up the sounds, so I'll try very hard not to move too much. That being said, we're here to talk about tech and my journey into tech and how I got where I am today, etc. You got a, an ear right there. You wanna say hi, Nico? Vinny? Vinny, puppy? He does not wanna say hi. He's chilling. It's a gloomy Seattle day and he is loving it. It's been raining all day. It's cozy. We're loving it. Speaking of cozy, get yourself your coffee or tea. Mine is a piping hot green tea and I won't be able to sip it just yet because it is extremely hot. But this is what I'll be having. Secondly, I want to say for context that I am three months away from being a year full time at Microsoft. It still feels like my third week, to be honest. I don't think that will go away anytime soon, but I have learned a lot along the way as well, as much as I like to forget that. And so I figured I would share what my journey was getting to this point. Argentine, Miami girl, moving to Seattle, having gone from fashion design and graphic design and branding and illustration to the absolute complete opposite and feeling very challenged in good ways and bad ways. It's, it's all been a ride and I'm in the middle of it. So I figured it's the second best time to do this video. The best time would have been right after my internships and full-time offer, but it was a whirlwind, a lot going on. I really did not have time to sit down and do this, but it's a cozy Seattle day. I don't have anything immediate to be doing, so I figured, you know what? Let me sit down and have this conversation before I forget everything, because I'm realizing the longer that I settle into my role and into this new life, the more that I forget everything that it took to get to this point, um, everything that I did, everything that I suffered through and the successes along the way, all of that good stuff. So it's time for me to share that. So let's have that chat. Let me get my tea. Hopefully it's not too hot anymore. Okay, okay, we can work with that. So let's go back a few years. I first decided to switch to computer science back in 2015, I want to say. 2015 or 2016 was this renaissance era for my, my purpose, my life, my career. Before that, as I mentioned, I was doing graphic design, fashion design. I was working freelance from Argentina. And then when I moved to the States, uh, I couldn't work. I couldn't find any work in Europe. That was another option that I looked into if I couldn't settle here and work here. I said, okay, I can move to Europe, find something and design there. I applied far and wide to any position I found and didn't get any callbacks at all. So I took that as my sign that that whole avenue and plan was not the way. I started thinking a lot about my options, uh, both career-wise and with immigration and all that stuff. It felt extremely lonely. And through those experiences and through those feelings, I was also going to school and trying to get an education in the United States. And it was rough. I went through a lot of soul searching and, and coming to terms with reality, accepting things as they are. That one was the hardest one for me, but I came to a point where it was extremely painful to fight it. And so my only alternative to be able to really exist within myself and not drive myself crazy was to accept things as they were. And that's really part of what also drew me into Buddhism and that school of thought, because that moment was when I realized I need to accept this as if I had chosen it, because there is a reason to all of this. This whole conversation is taking a bit of an unexpected turn, but it's, it's all part of my journey and how I got here. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for the struggles, if it hadn't been for the fact that 
I fell at my lowest during these struggles and I felt so lost. And somehow during all of that, I discovered coding. And that is where the story really starts. I had dabbled in CSS and HTML because that's a big part of, of that kind of stuff. I wanted to present your work online and the visual graphic part of being online. <laughs> and so I knew about coding to that extent. I had no idea really what coding was at that point. I didn't know anything about software engineering at all. I didn't know that pathway existed. I grew up really not knowing about any of that. 2015 comes around. Uh, my brother was studying software engineering. I really didn't know what the heck he was doing, but he started sending me links to uh, different coding tutorials. And he said, try this out. I, at the time, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. I was really disenchanted by what I was doing before by fashion design and all that stuff, I started feeling a big emptiness in that space and in, in my purpose related to that, it felt very superficial to me. So that's a whole other can of worms. I'm not gonna dive into this because it's gonna be an extremely long video, but I can talk about that at some other point too, if anyone's interested. But I just, I was, I was going through it. I was soul searching. I was questioning everything in my life, especially my path. And at that point I discovered coding. I was also going to community college at that point, just for regular associates in art, just to get a degree. And I knew that whatever I did, I wanted to, to get a degree and really accomplish that in my life, especially in the United States. That had really been my dream since I was little, was moving here and studying here. So I started that and I was still unsure of what my major was going to be. But I went in and while I was taking my regular classes like ENC 1101 and whatever else they required of me, algebra, all that stuff, I was learning to code on the side. I was extremely curious about this whole programming thing and it, I had gotten hooked. I was spending all my time outside of class coding, figuring out how to create different apps and designs. I remember taking a Udemy course for iOS development that same year. And so I really dove in hard and I discovered that I really enjoyed it. I, I was extremely hooked. That's also when I first started my Instagram account, really morphed very quickly into a coding account just to document my journey into learning how to code on my own. And through that platform, I also started seeing a lot of other women who were engineers at big tech companies or building things on their own. And it opened my eyes to a, a world that I had never known before. And then a new dimension of that world, if that makes any sense, because it was all women that I was seeing that were doing amazing things in this space. And it made me find people that I looked up to and that I saw myself in. So... It was, it was looking like I was going to go into programming. Spoiler alert, I did. I declared my major at that community college for computer science and I started taking programming classes. My first programming class was C++ and it honestly should not have been. Some people advocate for that, but for me, it almost pushed me away. I took that before I was fully decided and it went towards the cons list very quickly, but ultimately it was what I wanted to do. So I declared that. I took then a Java class, two Java classes, programming one, programming two in Java. And 2019, I graduated from my associates. Now that's also not the ideal timeline. So it, it was a real struggle for me emotionally and um, just confidence wise. That was a struggle and that was something that took me a while to just accept as if I had chosen it. And really that phrase and that thought on its own has gotten me through so much. I know it's hard sometimes to, to come to terms with it, but you can accept it and walk parallel to it as opposed to walking against it and getting pushed back constantly. And believe me, I, 
I got a lot of that getting pushed back constantly. I declared my major. I graduated from my associates in 2019. And then really the true journey started in 2020, which was also the year that the world went crazy. So things didn't really settle as I thought they would. While I was in community college, I was not able to apply to internships. I don't know if things have changed now, but back then I used to talk to recruiters and they would say, contact us again when you're at your four year university, you'll apply then. But I needed to start my bachelor's in order to be able to apply. So that was one of the other things that was getting my way is I need to be done with this associates so that I can start applying to internships and start getting experience. So as soon as 2020 came around, I started at Florida International University in January of 2020. So I got a month and a half in person and then you know what happened. I don't need to tell you that part. That was actually the best excuse to study for interviews because the world was closed. No one was doing anything. I wasn't missing out on any parties or outings or dinners or anything. And so that's what I did. I started studying for interviews, learning everything I needed to for technical interviews in February. Then that summer is when I took my first Code Path course. And now if you've been on my channel, if you've been on my Instagram, I'm always talking about Code Path, but it's because they've had a huge impact in my journey. So I only want to amplify that and give other people the opportunity to have that sort of experience. I did this technical interview prep course that summer. And then once the summer was done, I kept studying for interviews all on my own, started applying around August, September when internship applications opened. I was extremely nervous about starting to apply for internships and I almost didn't that year. Really the factor that made me start applying so early on was that I was going to miss out on a lot of the earlier internships if that makes sense. So like the Microsoft Explore and the what used to be Facebook University, all of those like first and second year internships. Now my path was also really strange because I had already done an associates but that associates took many years and I was starting now the second half of my degree. My, so it was a really weird timeline and I didn't know if I was gonna qualify for that or not. But I came to learn from recruiters that what determines if you qualify for those freshman, sophomore internships is not what year you are necessarily, but your graduation date. And that's why I ended up qualifying for the freshman and sophomore internships. So if that's still the case, then really look into that. It's something that I didn't know from the very beginning and I would have really missed out. My whole journey would have been different because spoiler alert, I ended up getting into one of those uh, freshman, sophomore uh, internships. Had I not known that, who knows what my journey would have been. I already spoiled it, but I did a bunch of applications. I had a whole spreadsheet full of links uh, to all these different companies that I wanted to apply to. And I was every single day applying to a handful of those, making sure that I wasn't missing any opportunities and just getting out there because I learned that it's a numbers game and you're not going to get called back for the first or second or even 10th that you apply to. You just have to keep applying as much as you can. And so long story short, I got a call back from Microsoft for their Explore internship. I also got a few others. I did a, a coding assessment for a few other internships for Google and Facebook. Uh, I think Lyft I may have done. Yeah, I think I did for Lyft, but I got to the phone screening with Microsoft. And I remember I was terrified. <laughs> I was so nervous because that was my first choice. And so I was really scared of messing that up. There were a few other like interviews that I did that I went in really chill, really calm, really confident because my, my eggs weren't all there. With Microsoft, that was my 
my goal since the very beginning. And so I was terrified. I didn't want to mess it up. And um, I just really prepared like crazy. I remember I was every single day practicing problems. Uh, my friend Amar sent me a bunch of lead code problems that he had done when he uh, interviewed for Microsoft as well. He was full time at Microsoft at that point, but he'd done internships prior to that. And so I was grinding it like the kids call it. It was 2020, so of course I didn't get flown out, but I did a virtual interview. I passed that and I think it, it, it was three rounds or two rounds. I can't remember really, but what I do remember is that I took some footage right before I went into my interview and when I was studying and stuff like that, because even if it was for me, I just knew that I wanted to, to have that. Nico's getting comfy. I just knew I wanted to have that to, to remember and maybe it would also serve for just sharing my experience. So if I find that, I'll include it right here. So it's T minus one day to my interview. I did just a random prep interview just now. I got a very basic question about sorting and pancake sorting and some flipping. And I was like, what? <clears throat> Your girl has not done any sorting yet. The interviewer I got was super nice, um, and then we flipped roles and I interviewed him, and he did great. I have to give myself some credit because I have been studying a lot and I haven't taken data structures. So far, I, I know hash tables, I know um, array strings, of course, I know how to traverse a tree, sort of, a little bit, but no breadth first, no depth first search, none of that. Uh, stacks cues, I know that. I was advised to let my interviewer know that I don't have all this knowledge yet and that I'll just be trying my best with the knowledge that I do have and we, we will do our best. It's all I can do. <laughs> And if you are studying for interviews or if you're starting out in computer science and you are feeling discouraged or you are feeling dumb because Lord knows I feel dumb AF, don't. It's, it's the most common thing in the world. We will get through it. Just keep going keep pushing, keep studying, make a plan. I'm not gonna lie, I am feeling a bit discouraged. Having to do all of this is in itself a lot of work. Having to do it in quarantine, in isolation, under not the best circumstances, and just feeling very deprived of life and things and normalcy. Ideally, I would love to do this with other people that are going through this which is why I am hitting the internet I need you all support and I'm here to support you in any way I can too because I know how rough it is and how just mentally draining how emotionally taxing it is it's a lot a lot a lot a lot of work and it just makes you question yourself a lot which kind of sucks but this is how we grow this is how we get better we improve and we will make it happen we will keep going we will keep studying this is what I'm gonna do right now and it'll happen sooner or later we will get that job I got the offer around December to intern at Microsoft as an Explorer intern, which means that you get to experience the PM role as well as the software engineering role. The spring semester rolls by and my devices started arriving in the mail. I was set to do a remote internship because that is what the state of the world was at that point. 
I did a successful internship. I was able to get to see what the PM role is like and what the software engineering role is like. I never fully considered PM really. I always knew that I wanted to do software engineering, but I took that internship to really consider it. And the way that I did it was I just suspended my belief that I wanted to be a software engineer. And I said, okay, if I come into this with no expectations, with no set decision, and I give both a fair chance to really understand what they are, because PM, I had no idea what it was. Like, it, the role varies a lot. So I was like, what does a PM really do, you know? So I went in, I gave both a chance. I interviewed a lot of PMs and a lot of software engineers to understand what the role was and uh, what they were doing day to day and what their impact was. My project itself involved a PM portion. So I got that experience there. And it just really solidified the fact that I wanted to do software engineering. And so that's the route that I went. My first internship concluded successfully and I got a return offer for summer of 2022. Now, this is where things get fun and interesting and cool because this was an in-person internship. I worked on the Visual Studio team and I was able to work on my own feature. It was such an amazing time. I have such fond memories of that summer. My feature later went on to get shipped out when I came back full time and I got to see the feature being presented at the Ability Summit because it was uh, the accessibility checker for Visual Studio, which made the whole experience extremely insane. I was able to have such profound impact in such a short amount of time and as an intern. I had never felt that way before. I had never experienced something like that, such a quick turnaround. And at one of the biggest tech companies in the world, it, it was insane. I feel like, I don't know, that, that was a very unique experience. I'm just incredibly grateful for that experience. I had a great team. I had an awesome mentor who was also really invested in accessibility. I had a PM who had worked for so long to really ideate this feature and, and make it something that is useful and valuable. And he had been advocating for it for years. So the fact that an intern comes around and they're like, there's this piece of work that is just so beautiful and impactful and that can help so many people. And we want you to be a part of it and we want you to work on this. And with their guidance and their support, I was able to do that. Like, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but it, it was fantastic. And then aside from that, the in-person events were great. Um, I have a lot of friends from school that have ended up at Microsoft too. It was just a really fun time. That internship also ended successfully and I got a return offer as a full-time software engineer. So I flew back to Miami, finished my last semester, graduated in December, December 17th, I think I walked, no, December 15th. And then December 17th, I was on the flight moving to Seattle. And that has been another wild experience. It is now September. It's been nine months since I started. I started January 2nd, I think. Or some, yeah, I'm pretty sure January 2nd. So it's been a long time now, but also very short as well. And that is really the whirlwind story of how this crazy baluda ended up somehow in one of the biggest tech companies in the world as a software engineer when she never even thought she'd do math or science or anything non-artistic. It's just a testament to the fact that people change, dreams change. Uh, you discover yourself, you learn a lot more about what you really want and what works for you and how you work best and how you want to work. And so I can also talk about that later on, what I didn't like about graphic design and fashion design and what I liked about because it had a lot to do with my personality. But I don't want to keep rambling on about this. 
my battery died because I talked for way too long, but I just wanted to come back with a brand new battery to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about any other topics that I mentioned here or something else. I hope hearing my experience helped, inspired you, gave you some perspective on anything you may be going through. I know it helped me a lot to hear other people's stories, so I hope it's of value. I'll see you on the next one.